Welcome back to Gizmo Guild TV. Today, we're going to use these copper clad grounding rods to provide a proper ground for the workshop. This is something I've been wanting to do for quite a while, but a recent equipment purchase has made it sort of urgent. So I guess I'd better get to it. And right here in this bag, we have a secret weapon that's going to tell us exactly whether we have a good ground or not. This is actually kind of important. You can pound in grounding rods all day long, but unless you can actually measure the result, you don't know whether you have a proper ground. So I invested in this little device that I think is going to be very useful, not just for this project, but for others too. And why do these darn things never open properly? Anyway, here it is, ready to roll. Now we just need to go outside, grab our shovel, and do some digging. So here goes hole number one. It doesn't need to be too deep, just deep enough that the rod can be completely covered. Luckily for me, I have a pretty good layer of soil to work with. No humongous rocks or anything that could derail the project. Just pound and pound and pound until that thing gets down there where it needs to be. And as a pair of gloves magically appears on my hands, I'm almost done with this rod. Now we can go ahead and measure our ground resistance with just one rod. First a battery check, that's good. The black lead goes to the ground rod we just installed in the ground. The yellow lead goes to the first of two auxiliary ground rods that are used only for the measurement. The red lead goes to the second auxiliary ground rod. The auxiliary ground rods need to be placed in the ground in a straight line at a spacing of about 5 to 10 meters apart. In my garden, I can space them about 6 meters apart, so that's what I'm doing. And here we are, connecting the first auxiliary ground rod and making sure the connection is good. Now we'll do the same thing for the second auxiliary ground rod, which will be placed a total of 12 meters away from our main ground rod, the one we're trying to measure, which puts it another 6 meters away from the first auxiliary ground rod, all in a straight line. Now we can connect the rod and do our customary little wiggle to make sure that we have a good connection. And of course, we have to connect the ground rod that we're trying to measure, so we'll do that now. Wiggle, wiggle. Now, with our multiplier set to 100 ohms, we press the measure button and twiddle the knob until we center the needle. That should give us an approximation of our ground resistance. Right now, it seems to be about 300 ohms, which is a little high. Looks like we'll have to install that second rod, so let's go dig. More digging. And more pounding. And now we can connect the two rods together and make another measurement. They're not connected here yet, but I'll do that before I go over to the meter. Moment of truth. Press the button, twiddle the knob, and... Very nice. With two rods, the ground resistance is now about half what it was with just one rod, which I guess is to be expected. Not too bad, and it will do for now. Now I'll install a weatherproof feed-through so we can get our newly created ground into the workshop where it belongs. And there it is. So let's get in out of the cold. With our new ground line wired in, we actually have three-prong outlets that function as three-prong outlets, rather than two-wire outlets that simply allow three-prong plugs to be connected without adapters. I now have four outlets that are properly grounded. And that's great, because I want to start using this stuff, which we will cover in a future video.